the end of your article, you tell the story of a building at 44 Berry Street as an example of what may be the future of some of these condo buildings. Tell us what the new owners are doing with their property now that the the bubble has burst. Well, that's a really interesting property. That's a building that, say, three, four years ago would have cost anywhere from 15 to $18 million. And a company called Atherton out of California had purchased it or had been very set to purchase it. I don't know the price on that because the deal fell through when Atherton went bankrupt. At that point, the owner uh, had already received a million-dollar deposit on it and, and sold the building cheap to a guy named Jamie Weissman and his partners, who, rather than turning it into luxury condos, which were originally planned, turned it into a rental building, which in, in flavor and feel is much like the buildings that people thought Williamsburg was going to be losing, big, airy lofts designed to be shared, you know, two bedrooms designed to be shared by four people, three bedrooms designed to be five people with you know, an aspiring filmmaker crashing on the mezzanine and paying $200 a month. And I think what you're going to start seeing as as more buildings start to turn over and and more banks start clamping down on their developers, some of these buildings, whether they're half complete or fully complete or or incomplete, will, uh, will start to become rentals. And what you're going to start seeing is something interesting, which are these very swanky designed apartments that are likely to be inhabited by Many of the of the people who have started to move in since the 90s, who for, for over the past few years have really feared being displaced by the new construction. David Abstin, who wrote a piece for this week's New York Magazine called The Billy Berg Bust about Williamsburg, and WNYC development reporter Matthew Sherman. Matthew, Matthew, displacement is a big part of this story, right? I mean, one of the things that's so disheartening for people is that buildings were knocked down. People and businesses were displaced in order to develop some of these condos, and then they're sitting empty or construction has stalled. You talked to someone who ran a manufacturing business in the area of Williamsburg that was rezoned to residential use. That's right. Uh, Leo Lewin was his name, and he he has a tannery, actually. Uh, He had to move out to East New York, uh, Brooklyn, and you go into his uh, place, and it uh, smells a little funny, and there are ten to 15,000 pelts uh, hanging uh, by clothespins or around this uh, big airy space um, that he uh, he processes into wearable furs for the for hunters and trappers as far away as uh, Alaska. He had a space on 65 Hope Street, a, a big warehouse building by the Brooklyn Queens Expressway in Williamsburg. It was actually a purely manufacturing zone at that time, but there were a lot of people living in that building uh, as well as as industrial businesses like his. And uh, right when the rezoning was approved by the city council in May of 2005, he got a letter from his landlord. He, he saw the writing on the wall. He wasn't surprised, and he, he said it was a, a peaceable um, parting, but he did have to pack up and move. It took him a long time to do that. He had to shut down his business uh, while he found another space, and um, the irony of it is that that building is vacant city currently. Vacant. It's it's waiting for the market to turn around. After the city went out of its way to rezone the area to allow former industrial sites to be turned into condos. Ruth in Brighton Beach, you're on WNYC. Hi, Ruth. Thanks for calling us. Oh, I'm in mourning. I'm in mourning of my lovely, once lovely Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach is horrible, terrible. They're destroying everything. Who? Every block, every block is cut down, taken houses away. They're building condos. Nobody's in them. They stop. They have no money. The first building was on 6th Street, and it's five stories high, and they have no money. They're just making rat holes. The things are made of paper. They're going to fall down. There's nobody in them, and they cost a fortune. They want 400000 for a tiny two-bedroom, which you couldn't fit three dogs in. And some of these things are built, Ruth, and One sitting vacant? five stories. Say again? And they stop, one is five stories high, but they stopped last year. They can't afford to build anymore. So it's a skeleton. The others are all fenced starting in, but they have no money. So they're just fences, fences, everywhere fences. Houses are going. It's awful. It's awful. Ruth, thank you very much. Brighton Beach. Uh, I don't know if you do web maps, but go to WNYC.org, click on Brian Lair Show, and post some of those locations. Either of you familiar with Brighton Beach? David, you know Brighton Beach at all? I know your article's about Williamsburg. I, I know Brighton Beach, but I, I don't know so much about the market there. But what we have seen in Brighton Beach is something we've seen everywhere. You know, in, in, in flush times, almost everyone wants to become a developer. In some of these old Brooklyn neighborhoods, you have families who have owned land for for generations and they think oh the market's hot i'm going to get four hundred thousand dollars for these apartments she's describing 
And so they go to work, and maybe their financing is a little iffy, and then suddenly when the, when the bubble bursts, things get really bad, and we, we see a lot of these skeletons. All right, other Brighton beaches, we want you to post to our webpage. Go to WNYC.org, click on Brian Lair Show.